In this problem, we have a uh, proton that we'll call uh, Q1. It has a charge of just plus E. And then we have an iron nucleus over here that has a charge Q2 of plus 26 E. And we're told that this proton starts with some initial velocity V0 and it travels over here and gets really close to the iron nucleus, some distance R min, before it turns around. And we're told that R min is 2.5 times 10 to the minus 16 meters. So given that minimum distance, and then given that it starts off at some initial value of R of infinity, <clears throat> we got to find out what's the initial velocity of this uh, of this proton. All right, so uh, boy, you know, so just to eliminate a couple things, I can't use f equals ma here, and then use the acceleration and the initial velocity and the distance to find uh, the or, or you know final velocity. I, I can't do all this right because the acceleration is not constant, and so you can't use f equals ma and your equations of motion with constant acceleration. It doesn't work here. We're going to have to use work energy. And uh, the work energy theorem tells us that the sum of the works done by all the forces is equal to the work done by the electric force. And that's the only relevant force in the problem. We're given that in the problem statement. And that's equal to the change in kinetic energy. Now, the work done by the electric force, we have a couple of different ways to find that, right? One way is F delta S cosine theta. But that doesn't work here <clears throat> because we don't have a uh, uniform field, right? The field varies as you get further and further away from Q2 here. The field gets weaker and weaker, so you can't use f equals or the work equals f delta s. You instead got to use minus delta u e. <clears throat> but we also know from our, uh, our formula sheet that the change in electric potential energy for this charge q1 uh, traveling through the potential delta v2 is uh, minus q delta v. So I can write minus q1 times delta v. 2 is equal to 1 half mv squared final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy. Right Now the final kinetic energy is 0. Right? It comes to a stop here. The initial kinetic energy is something we have to solve for. And so uh, this becomes minus q1 and then we have vf minus vi is equal to minus 1 half mv naught squared. And I'm going to go ahead and drop that minus sign. Uh, let me substitute in for VF and VI, right? So this is Q1. Now VF is KQ2 over R min. And VI is KQ2 over infinity. I'm using my formula for absolute potential of a point charge here. That's equal to 1 half and V naught squared. And of course this term is 0 because infinity is so big. All right. So I just have to... I have to plug in all my numbers for this and plug in all my numbers over here and I solve for V naught. I know M, the mass of the proton. I know Q2, I know Q1, I know K, and I know R min. So it's just a simple matter of solving for V naught. Uh, if I write down the equation, I get uh, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. That's Q1. Multiplied by K. Multiplied by Q2, which is 26 times 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. Okay, so this, this term appears twice. Right? If I were writing this in shorthand, I would say that kq1 q2 over r squared is ke squared times 26 over r. Sorry, no, just over. So sometimes you'll see this notation in the book in the solutions. Anyway, uh, I'm trying to be a little more thorough about this. So. Now, R min is up here. That's uh, 2.5 times 10 to the minus 16. All right, now we set that equal to 1 half times 1.67 times 10 to the minus 27. That's the mass of a proton from our formula sheet. And when we solve for V naught squared, we get 2.87 times 10 to the 16th. So V naught is 1.7 times 10 to the 8th. So less than the speed of light. It's actually relativistic. Uh, so this isn't a great problem, but it's close enough for government work, so we'll go with that answer.